So today I want to speak about lighting with intention and what I mean by that is lighting our scenes with the complete assumption of what's going to happen when we move a light to a specific place, scale it down, change the colour of it, and I think through that we can manipulate our scenes and our artwork in any form, no matter what software you're in, what render engine you use, whether you're drawing, whether you're taking photos, but we can manipulate our subject to present themselves as whatever we want. And I think that's awesome, and I want to go over that today. And if we look at my scene here, we can see I've got this protagonist set up. I've lit the character in a way, all the lights around him, so he looks like a hero. He looks like the protagonist of the story. Now if I move those lights around, I can immediately make him look like the villain. And that's just with lighting. No material changes, no grading changes, I mean it's in the picture view. Nothing. All I've done is shifted the lights around. There's three lights on each scene, you change the colour, position, and today I want to go over that. So let's get into it. Now, of course, I'm gonna have this scene on myself, and I'll have it free because when I'm doing things like lighting and it's for people that are beginners, I want you to be able to get into that and learn it and not kind of need like a paywall. So this scene will be on my self eye store for free and you can go into it, you can see all the different lighting setups and you can play around with it, so go check that out. But as you can see here, just to evaluate these a little bit further, I've got the hero and I've got the villain. So, you know, protagonist, antagonist. And you can see how I've set up the lights to make you know, one guy look a little bit taller and a bit more uh, heroic and make this guy look a little bit more menacing. So let's go over that. So in the scene here, I've turned off all the lights and I've got the model. Now, the, of course, if you really do want to follow along and you want the material because you want it to be exactly along, like I said, project files free. So the material is just a slight subsurface scattering material. It's, it's kind of like one of those wax ones. So I did want a little bit of light kind of coming through it. It just kind of helps. Don't have to use it. That's just kind of me being me, I guess. Um, so I'll drop in a light. Now we'll kind of go for this protagonist look first. And I think whatever render you're lighting, you just, it's not that you need to plan everything out because this is art, art. As artists, we're chaotic, right? But it's it's good to no reaction. It's like knowing one plus one is two, you know, that if you put those two numbers together, you get a certain thing. And I think often with lights, it's like we move them around, we change them, we do this, and we're doing it, but we don't know the direct result of the actions that we're taking by moving them. So that's kind of what I want to go over. So for this hero look, you kind of got to think, if you're a fan of movies like me as well, you, you know kind of the way heroes look. And villains, they often have that kind of like, under light kind of coming up above them and it was actually pretty similar lighting between the both of them but what we're going to do i'm just going to bring this light into the tutorial one here and we'll call this uh, light one and i'm going to put the power up to 10,000 to begin with now of course you should know the smaller your light source the sharper the shadows and the further away it is the sharper the shadows the closer it is and the bigger it is the more soft they are so we're going to abuse that and I'm going to put a target on the light. If you don't use targets with your lights, it might be something you want to start doing because then you can just kind of drag the light around and it's always pointing at your subject and it just kind of it stops you. It speeds up your workflow because it stops you from having to grab the light and turn it and follow it and then it's never exactly pointing. So um, it's not something I do all the time because I'm lazy, but uh, I'm sure it saves you a lot of time in the long run. So what we'll do is we'll kind of get like this light backlighting in over his shoulder like that. Kind of want it coming over him. Nice sharp shadow on top of him. And we can just kind of extend that out, bring it in, and back that up. And now we've kind of got this nice kind of slightly shadowy figure, you know? You could take this in a direction where you want something a little bit ominous. And of course you can't be doing this with any model or, you know, whether it's a car or a sphere. I do think models that have a little bit more intricacies to them. So people, he's already got a specific tone to him, which helps emphasize things. You could use a sphere or a cube or whatever, but it's not gonna, you're not gonna immediately get the same kind of um, imposement. So then what I'm gonna do is duplicate the light and I'm gonna bring it around him and kind of under to the right of him. So if we turn off the first one, we've got this nice big bleed over his shoulder with that shadow coming down over his chest. And with the second light, I'm going to make it smaller and I'm going to make it a bit wider. And I'm going to make sure this is in front of him. 
or maybe just kind of at the side of him and I'll make it maybe a slightly different color a little bit warmer using tone to your advantage is going to help a lot with your lights whether it be warm or cold differentiating between them can really kind of change up a look and then you know just duplicate it again bring it off to the left you can maybe this make this one a little bit warmer we can bring down the power to like a thousand back it up to the side of him bring it up a little bit I'm just going to move it around and fill in those shadows with a bit of warmth. I'm going to come down even to something like 100, 500. And then in our first light, I'm going to kind of take it completely blue and I'm going to make the light strength something like 70,000. You keep bumping up that, you're going to get more and more sharp shadows. And then in compensation for doing that, you're probably going to have to move your light further away. You don't want to go too far because then it just negates the points of putting up the power, but well, it works. And then if we turn off our second two lights, you can kind of get a bit with grips of what the first light's doing. I wouldn't really recommend editing one light deeply without turning off the other lights or soloing it. And I know that I want this shadow here to be quite emphasized. And then with the first light, so now I've placed the lights, they're kind of like templates, you know, it's like now I want to run through them slowly and refine them and understand what's going on with them. I think I'm going to close this one up a little bit. I'm going to slightly bring it onto his back more because I'm not really liking. I'm going to bring it below him a little bit more so it stops interfering with the shadows. And then with that light, I'm probably going to do the same. And then if you highlight them all and send them all to the same sampling rate. After that's solved a little bit, you can kind of see we've got a slightly heroic uh, look to him. Now it's not like the one I just spent two hours making and perfecting, but it's there, right? It looks good. And, and I think if you take that narrative there with what you want before you move a light you end up with a much more direct result and then you also kind of end up with something that's not so much of a fluke because I think more often than not we make renders and we get a certain look and then we get scared to move it because what if we can't get that look back but what if you can get that look off the top of your head all the time that's kind of what lighting with intentions so we'll duplicate that and we'll make this one completely different. We'll make it more imposing, more um, menacing. We're going to completely change it. So I'm going to take that first light. I'm going to bring it under him. I'm going to get it. Like in, in movies where they put a torch underneath their, um, their face before they tell a scary story. Kind of like that. And then what I'm going to do is neutralize it and maybe bring the power to like 10,000 and widen it up a bit. And I just kind of wanted to isolate his face and then we'll grab the second light. And I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and kind of get it over his shoulder. And this one I'm gonna make a bit, a bit more orange with the first one. I'll keep it blue for now. I'm gonna go to about 5,000 on the power bring it down, make it a bit wider again. Kind of bring it in and thin it up a bit so you get those sharp shadows. And grab the third light. Now you don't need three lights, it's just kind of a general system. And then what I would do with this light is try and get it on his, on his left shoulder. And keep it in it orange, but I'd maybe try and make this one tall so it covers the length of him more. While adding to that orange tint. And I think something like that looks pretty good. It's, uh, even the two lights I think here looks good. And then if you compare both of them, you store them. And you look at both of these, you've got a heroic look. 
and you've got a more menacing look. Now, again, I spent more time on my originals, always do, but but in, in exchange of giving you a more bite-sized lesson where you learn a lot more a lot quicker, I think it's um, worth the devalue of quality. Uh, now using that, you can take that anywhere. You can say, okay, yeah, I want to light up my whole scene and not really have any dramatic shadows. I want to have one light backlight in him, so he rim lights. I did a tutorial on that like nine months ago. I think it's really important to do that. And then if you get really good at that, you know, you see less dependency on high quality textures and HDRI maps and really good models because now that was some free model I downloaded offline. And I think it's going to help really refine the kind of looks you want to achieve in your work. So kind of having that intention about the way you're going to light your scenes really helps refine the approach to your work, the kind of look you're going to have, how you're going to uh, uh, apply lights to your scenes because you're not going to be dealing with light blowing out so much. You're not going to be dealing with as much troubles with your lights. I think more often than not we get a lot of, and I think we all have this, is as 3D artists we get a lot of troubles with lights. And this one's blowing out this bit, but it adds this kind of nice room light here. And it's just, but when you kind of think about it more and you stop just putting in lights to put in lights, and you put in lights with the intention of them having a very specific purpose, your scenes are going to just skyrocket. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check out this scene, try and mesh around with the lights, find a kind of specific look you want to have, whether it be backlighting, above lighting, under lighting, anything, and see what look that has. And then next time you're making a render, whether it be client work or um, just a render for a render, um, think about before you hit drop that octane area light in there or whatever it is think about why you're putting it in there and your work's going to change a lot and with all that being said I will see you in the next tutorial